Today we're going to talk about three hormones that can cause your cholesterol to become elevated or remain high. So hi, I'm Dr. Lori Marvis. I'm a board certified family and lifestyle medicine physician who has spent decades helping people find better health through lifestyle intervention, nutrition, and other means. So let's get to it. So what are these three hormones? There's multiple ones, but these are the three main hormones that can really affect people's particular cholesterol levels. This is one of the number one questions I get from individuals as they're seeking to find better health is how can I get this cholesterol down? And why is it so important? Because we understand from studies that yes, LDL cholesterol and inflammation and other things are really important in maintaining a healthy heart. <laughs> and given that cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of men and women, it's an important thing to pay attention to. So let's get started. What is the first one? Well, remember that First of all, cholesterol is important, right? We do need a certain amount of cholesterol because it's important for cell membrane integrity and hormone synthesis. Things like uh, estrogen and testosterone and all those hormones that we need to be made throughout our body. But when you have too high cholesterol, this is when it can be uh, an issue as it lays down plaque inside the cardiovascular system, inside the arteries, therefore depriving the end tissue from oxygen, be it your brain or your heart or other organs. So some of these hormones in particular, let's start with number one, is your thyroid hormone. Yes. So thyroid hormones um, produce T4, which is thyroxine, and a little bit of T3. Most of T4 is converted to T3 in the tissues. And it really plays a crucial role in maintaining and regulating metabolism, including lipid metabolism. So what are the mechanisms of cholesterol elevation? So first of all, you have your metabolic rate. So thyroid hormones increase the what we call a BMR or your basal metabolic rate. That really influences the body's overall energy expenditure and metabolic processes. Now, hypothyroidism, which is what I've had for the last 28 years, um, are low levels of thyroid hormones. That leads to a decreased metabolic rate, reducing the body's ability to process and uh, clear cholesterol efficiently. In addition to this, you get lipoprotein metabolism issues, right? So thyroid hormones upregulate the expression of LDL receptors in um, on the liver cells. And these receptors are responsible for removing the LDL or that low density lipoprotein cholesterol from the blood. That's your bad cholesterol. Now in hypothyroidism, the reduced expression of LDL receptors results in a decreased clearance of LDL cholesterol leading to elevated LDL levels in your blood. And one other thing is bile acid synthesis. So thyroid hormones are involved in converting cholesterol into bile acids, which are excreted from the body. Now, lower thyroid hormone levels like that in hypothyroidism impair that conversion process. And that leads to decreased cholesterol clearance and increased blood cholesterol levels. So just the reminder, they have increased, uh, also associated with uh, increased total cholesterol, LDL, and sometimes triglycerides. So it can definitely increase your risk for atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. We'll get to what to do here in a minute, but I wanted to highlight thyroid number one. Next is estrogen and cholesterol. Estrogen is the primary female sex hormone, right? And it's really vital, obviously, for reproductive health, bone density, and lipid metabolism. So what are the mechanisms of cholesterol elevation? Well, first of all, it's lipoprotein levels, right? So estrogen positively influences the lipid profiles by increasing your high density lipoprotein, which is your HDL, your good cholesterol, and reduces your low density lipoprotein or your LDL cholesterol levels. Now, estrogen also stimulates the liver production of HDL and then enhances the clearance of LDL from the bloodstream. So, there's also lipoprotein lipase activity. So what does that mean? Well, estrogen modulates the activity of this lipoprotein lipase, and that's basically an enzyme that is critical for the metabolism of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, meaning the little trucks that carry a lot of the triglycerides, which are the fats in your blood. And then this modulation helps in maintaining those lower levels of triglycerides in the blood, which in and of themselves can independently increase LDL through a mechanism of actions. So with menopause and estrogen deficiency, what's happening 
is of course you have estrogen decline sharply. During perimenopause, it's kind of up and down, but during menopause, as you've reached that 12 month mark of no periods, it sharply decreases. And that can change your lipid profile. And this actually happened to me. Um, so basically what you'll see is a decrease in your HDL and an increase in your LDL and total cholesterol. When I first, you know, was perimenopausal, well, still menopausal, I'm in this 12 month waiting phase. Um, what I had done, which is interesting, I had done a um, cholesterol panel was probably three or four months prior to my last period that I had in November of last year. When I wasn't feeling so well, I started doing some blood work and saying, what is going on here, right? And it, my LDL sharply increased about 35 points. It scared the bejesus out of me because I had never had an LDL above 100 in my life. I ate a whole food plant-based diet. I exercised. My weight is good. I manage stress. I have good sleep. My thyroid was a little wacky as well. So that might've been part of it. So my thyroid needs increased and my LDL went up. So what was interesting is I adjusted medication. I started hormone therapy and all of it returned back to normal. So I've absolutely seen it. That is just anecdotal in my own case, but you know, I have so many women who come to see me and they're in this kind of perimenopause, menopausal state. And they're like, I'm doing everything right, everything I can do. I have a cholesterol lowering protocol that works many times, but I often wonder now, is this more of a perimenopausal menopausal issue? And should we be looking at different ways of addressing this in, in that particular population? So we'll get to this in here in just a minute. Next is insulin and cholesterol. Yes, insulin is a hormone, right? It's produced by the pancreas and it's important for glucose metabolism. And it can significantly affect lipid management or lipid metabolism. So what are the actual mechanisms of cholesterol elevation? So first of all, you get insulin resistance. So basically insulin resistance is a condition where the body cells become less sensitive or responsive to insulin. And then that leads to higher glucose levels, right? And then you get what we call compensatory hyperinsulinemia. Fancy words for saying the pancreas makes more insulin trying to get the glucose down. And this can be commonly seen in folks who are pre-diabetic or in type, type 2 diabetes. There are also some medications that will cause this. In addition, insulin plays a really important role in lipid metabolism, right? So when you think about um, uh, lipid synthesis and storage by promoting the uptake of glucose into adipose tissue, and then that's converted into what we call fatty acids. And insulin resistance, the impaired action of insulin leads to free fatty acids, right? The fats in your blood, um, increased level inside your blood. And then that's transported to the liver and converted to triglycerides in very low density lipoprotein or the VLDL, right? So VLDL can be considered the precursor on the spectrum to LDL. It, it's based on what's actually in the composition that would classify it either as VLDL, IDL, or LDL. Anyway, we're not, this isn't a class in actually lipid metabolism, but that's important. And then you get dyslipidemia, right, when you have um, insulin resistance, because it's a characteristic of dyslipidemia, which includes elevated triglycerides. Um, you have an increased small, dense um, LDL, which are the more dangerous ones, right? They're more what we call atherogenic, more likely to cause plaque, and a decreased good cholesterol, or HDL. Now, that can lead to the progression of atherosclerosis and, of course, heart disease. So insulin resistance, again, is an important manner thing to think about. So what do you do about all these things? Well, first of all, it really depends on the person, right? So you need to be assessing your situation. You probably need some additional labs. You need to be looking at your glucose metabolism. Where are you in the stage of your life? Are you male or female? Are you having low testosterone, low estrogen? Low testosterone also can be an issue with your lipid metabolism. Lots of things to be considered here. So each individual needs to assess their current health. Then you need to educate yourself on what are those things that you can do lifestyle intervention wise, or maybe you do need medications. There's an intersection where sometimes you need both. Always need lifestyle interventions, but sometimes medication is actually needed to promote and get you into the best possible position to decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease. And that's such an important thing to understand. Each person needs to be personalized. Now, are there certain things that you absolutely should be doing across the human race? Yes eating more fiber, 
And getting more fiber is such an important piece, right? So when you think about eating fiber, it helps decrease cholesterol levels. It, it promotes a good, healthy gut microbiome, which is so important also for other hormone uh, production and just, again, decreasing inflammation, which also promotes insulin resistance, many, many things. So we have fiber with the whole food plant-based diet. You're also not consuming cholesterol, which is a small part of your total cholesterol. Your body actually makes the majority of your cholesterol. Next is exercise. This will make you more insulin sensitive. The insulin resistance piece is a huge one, especially as such a majority of the American population is now overweight or obese. This is really, really becoming a serious situation. And, you know, in addition to that, really managing stress and your sleep. Again, all related. We all know what we should be doing, but how do we do that? How do you do that as an um, activity? Like what one should you be doing? What habits can you do? How do you create new habits? Well, I address this in my free masterclass. It's called the five steps to master your metabolism and lose weight. I also speak to the four biggest mistakes people struggle with in their weight loss journey. So I would encourage you to register. It's in the link below if you're on YouTube and if you're on Instagram, it's in the bio somewhere up there. So again, I put all this out there just to show you that there is ways to deal with this, but you need to be able to understand what you should be doing to personalize your own health journey because there isn't a one size shoe fits all. There's certainly some foundational things that everyone should be doing, but then we get into the weeds because the tweaking is really where the magic happens. And so I hope you found this helpful. Again, as always, I'm so thankful for you being here and I'm sending you joy, peace, and love, and of course healing because we all need more of that in this world, in our lives every single day. So thank you for being here. And if you found this helpful, please subscribe and share this with someone that you might think that would benefit from hearing this message. Again, as always, I appreciate you and have a great rest of your day.